And it, it is in the nature of Formula One now that the, as Jonathan mentioned, the regulations are, are trimming us into narrower and narrower boxes. So inevitably, uh, we don't see the, the big radical changes that we saw in the past from one year to the next. Um, so this car, in many ways, looks quite similar. But as you say, underneath, great deal of change. Every single part has been assessed, optimized for weight, stiffness, uh, performance in, other, in any other respect. Um, and when you add all of that up, you get a car that's, that's net quicker. Um, that's the name of the game. Um, so in every area, the teams are tasked to find that 1%, 2%. Uh, because we're looking for that total. Uh, nevertheless, there still are, you know, obvious innovations. Um, we, you know, have done a lot of work uh, around the back end, as, as has been discussed, uh, a lot more tidy packaging there. Um, we've had to respond to the change in the exhaust regulations. Uh, that's that's a, the, really the most significant change uh, from, from last year. So, um, that's, that's given the aerodynamicists a great challenge to come up with not, not only the downforce but the means of creating that balance uh, that Jensen and Lewis were talking about. Uh, you need the downforce but you need it in a way that you can use it. So uh, a lot of focus in that area. At least the drivers don't think it looks ugly. So that's, that's a start yeah. on, on that one. Um, yeah, as, as Martin, I think it was Martin said, it, it's, a car will, will, will look uh, good if it's quick. Um, but it's better to start looking good. So Tim, exciting, nerve-wracking <coughs> time for, for a car designer before it actually takes to the track? Uh, yes, it always is. I mean, you, uh, uh, you, you work very hard over the, uh, the winter period. In fact, well, since about this time last year. So it's um, you know, been over the course of a whole year, we've worked extremely hard on it. And, um, and um, of course, you're a bit nervous and anxious to uh, to find out exactly where you're um, where, where you're positioned in terms of performance with your uh, your opposite numbers. Um, we've we've set ourselves very um, uh, very tough and ambitious targets, and, um, and we fully intend to, uh, to to reach those by the first race and um, and deliver a championship winning uh, winning car. I mean, we've, uh, it, it is. I mean, a lot of people have been talking about this car so far over this launch, but it is a, a complete rework from, um, from nose to tail. I think there's very little that, um, that we've carried over. Um, you know, there's a few pieces of the fuel system, but, um, but otherwise I think just about everything on the, uh, on the car has, uh, has changed. We've worked extremely hard at producing a very, um, uh, very integrated um, aerodynamic and, um, and uh, design package. You know, there was a few features that we were pushing very hard from, from early on in the, uh, in the project, and we've just stuck to the things that we think really, really matter, uh, where we're going to extract most performance from the, uh, from the car. And I'm, I'm just really proud of the whole, um, the whole team and their efforts so far this year. And, um, and from now, we, um, we, we go into the next phase, the phase of the project, which is, uh, which is just really wringing the performance out of it, and, um, and we, we have a really good track record at, uh, at that, at developing the car over the season, and um, already we've got, we've got big plans. You know, we've, got, um, uh, we've got upgrades for front wing, rear wing, floor, and bodywork already, uh, already planned, and um, I'm sure there'll be a lot more coming through before the first race. I always love that part about Formula One. You design a car for the launch, but you know that by the time the first race comes, there's many, many upgrades will be put on it. Um, let's take some questions from the floor. Andrew Benson uh, first at the back, and then I'll come to guys in the middle. Uh, Paddy, there's a couple of obvious um, things stick out from the new car straight away. One is that you haven't taken the Red Bull eyelet approach at the, uh, at the front suspension mounting points in terms of the low nose. And the other is, although you've tightly packaged the rear end, you've got that big bulge sticking out in the airflow there, which I assume, although I can't see from here, is an exhaust exit. It is an exhaust um, exit. Can you talk about those two features a bit, please? Yeah, I mean, th there, was, there was a regulation uh, change around the front end this year to limit the height uh, of the nose and, and the forward part of the chassis. Um, we, we produced an arrangement which, which meets that regulation um, at the same time uh, it, it follows some of the philosophy that, that we've carried over from, from last year, uh, hence the line is, is similar uh, in appearance and we haven't, we haven't pursued the, the route that Red Bull took. Um, it's a matter of, of, of 
your philosophy and the different trades you make. Um, you know, you can't see performance necessarily uh, by eye. Uh, it's a, a matter of fine-tuning the balance between, between all the relevant aspects. You know, if you look at the front end, you're talking about trading aerodynamics, trading the, the height of the weight, uh, the arrangement of the suspension, uh, and its effect on aerodynamics and stiffness. So all of these things have to be combined to produce the best, the best result according to your own philosophy and your own measurements, uh, and that will come out differently for different teams. Next uh, question. Will first. Hello. Uh, guys, obviously a very uh, short amount of time between the end of last season and the start of this season's testing, just 70 days, uh, I believe, between uh, where we were in, in Brazil. Obviously, this car's been a year uh, in development and, as you say, a completely new car. Um, with rivals such as Mercedes not launching uh, their new car until the second test, how difficult is it to weigh up using those extra two weeks between first and second test for working on the car or getting that car immediately on track and using those first four days of testing? I think uh, Mercedes GP are clearly an exception in, um, in not taking their new car to the, uh, to the first test. I think the, uh, the accepted approach is get out there as early as you, uh, as early as you can. Um, uh, we've, we've worked very hard at putting together a, a, a launch package that, um, that is competitive, but then we know that there's lots of parts of the car that we want to, we want to develop and we give ourselves the opportunity to, uh, to do that. So, you know, the first test will be, um, will be more about putting um, mileage on the car, getting to know the systems, getting to, uh, to, to familiar with setting up the car with, um, with uh, different aerodynamic characteristics. But, um, but then by the time we get to the third test, then as we said, there'll be uh, a significant upgrade package and, um, <coughs> and we give our, that, ourselves the time to get that learning in and then get the upgrade package in. Um, Certainly, we've, we've tried different approaches in the past this time around. I think it's, um, it was the correct thing to do. Craig, I'll come to you in two seconds, but this man uh, was here first. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, Patty, last year's cars was distinctively uh, long wheel-based. I guess it was because of the exhaust uh, layout at the beginning. Uh, I realize you probably won't give much away, but can you just tell me whether this car is more compact? Uh, Simple answer is it's very similar. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> Craig. Uh, Craig Scarborough. Um, obviously, we see the nose you've largely sort of carried over in concept from last year, but one obvious change is the change in the side pod concept this year, where you've gone away from the, the U-shaped side pods. Can you tell us about why the concept's changed, why you don't feel that was a benefit this year? Um, yes, yeah, so we... Last year's U-shaped side pod worked very well with what we were trying to achieve last year with the, the exhaust layout. Um, it was all intended at, um, at creating more downwash to the, uh, to, the, to the rear end, and it performed particularly well last year. This year, um, at a fairly early stage, we set about some, some, a different approach to both the external and the internal aerodynamics of the car, and then once the exhaust regulation started to become a little bit clearer, then it was, um, it was quite obvious to us that, um, that the U-shaped side pod no longer fitted in with, um, with, with both the, the, the internal aerodynamics and some of the external aerodynamics that we'd, um, that we'd pursued early on. So um, it, it works, it worked very well last year, but it's actually just not suited to, uh, to what we're trying to achieve this year. Before we carry on with some questions from the floor, Keith Cummings is watching uh, today and is from Vodafone. Has a question for you, Paddy. With the changes in the location of the exhaust and the fact that it can't be as, as low as it was, do you think that you've managed to, to design in changes that will, will offset the, 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 uh, uh, the performance uh, loss? Or uh, are you kind of stuck with it this year? H how has that whole process uh, affected you in terms of lap times, do you feel? It's a very good question, um, and I think one that will, will receive quite a bit of attention. Clearly, uh, the last 18 months was a, the, the performance profit area was all around exhausts and blowing diffusers. Um, we now have new constraints in terms of the geometry, uh, so that is where we can put the exhaust pipe and uh, what angle it can, uh, can uh, be directed at. Uh, all of that intended to, to keep it high 
uh, and away from the diffuser. Um, and there have been some restrictions on what we can do with the engine. So some of the more extreme things that are being done to engine tuning uh, in order to maximize the blowing effect uh, have been severely restricted. Um, the, the fact of the matter, though, is that you know, exhausts exist on a car. You have to have them. They blow gas. Uh, that will always generate some performance, a finite level of performance. Uh, even just simply blowing exhaust out the back of the car produces thrust. Uh, that makes the car quicker. So uh, there still is a, a very narrow extent to which you can use exhaust gas to generate performance aerodynamically, um, much, much reduced from uh, last year. Uh, but inevitably, you know, we've been trying to look at the ways to, to make the most of that uh, in the face of the new constraint. Any more questions uh, from the floor? Sorry, Ted, one more at the back there. We have a hand up. Oh, it's Michael. Yes, it's okay. Michael. Uh, uh, going on on that question on the exhaust, if, if you rate the contribution of the exhaust to the aerodynamics from last year 100%, how much will it be today? And um, I mean, last year, obviously, you were blowing into the diffuser. Is it, are you now trying to blow onto other aerodynamic components? I think, in short, we could just say that you know it's, it's, it's drastically reduced. I mean, there's um, there, there are geometric constraints, and you're just not going to achieve the same uh, the same effect that you achieved last year. Um, you know, it's, a, it's as simple as that. It's, it's, it's reduced a long way. Um, you have to think about treating the rear end of the car differently, and um, and concentrating on on what we call unblown performance as opposed to uh, to blown performance. In effect, the, the performance we saw, uh, if you remember at Silverstone last year, there was a brief period at which uh, the engine tuning was restricted uh, significantly, and we saw a slightly different uh, ranking between the teams in terms of performance. Uh, we were hit particularly hard at that point, uh, which for me was a measure that we'd done a good job in the area, in fact. Uh, we'd put our effort into the area that was generating most performance. Um, but that, that was an interesting sign of, of as Tim says, you know, what, what was the unblown performance of a car, uh, and, and we've, we've taken lessons from that and built on that. Interesting. Ted and then Morris, if that's okay. Um, both of you, the, the season hasn't already started, and already we've had the EFIA banning something that a rival team had in development. <coughs> had you looked at uh, brake-operated ride height adjustments, did you believe it was legal and had you had some in development yourself for this year? It, that, that was a, uh, in a fam let's say in a family of designs that we've considered uh, often in the past. Uh, by our own assessment, we wouldn't have considered that to be legal. Uh, so, uh, you know, we didn't really get involved in, in uh, um, what, what uh, was being done. Um, our view was that wasn't something we would pursue. So I suppose it was, it was pleasing in that sense to see uh, that that avenue was closed down according to the same interpretation that we would have taken. Morris, Morris Hamilton. Uh, Morris Hamilton, the lessons learned from DRS last year, have they influenced your design much, for example, in how you might use it more on qualifying than the race and so on, particularly when doing the layout? And, related to the exhaust as well, perhaps? 